So hello, Pierre Lescure. Hello, Sophie. What should I call you? Pierre. That's fantastic. I don't have to call you Mr. President. Or, uh, no, no, no. Pierre's good. Pierre's fine. Why did you accept this function? Well, it was uh, after the 2013 festival that uh, on the last day, Gilles said to me, Gilles Jacob, he said, uh, you know, I've known him since 1974. I mean, he wasn't even born then. He said, uh, Pierre, I'd like uh, to talk after the festival. I've got something to talk about with you. So we had lunch together, and he said, uh, if you're interested, I will be your greatest support. So being president of this festival, you know, where Gilles has taken it to, you know, number one in the world, with Thierry. It's something which I think is very gratifying and very exciting. I mean, there's a lot to do as well. Yeah, you wanted to take the festival where? This young 68-year-old festival. Well, I think there's two parts in the job. And the first part is, you know, keeping up cultivating what Gilles, to a great extent, and Pierre as well for the past uh, Ten, uh, and Thierry have done for the past 10 years as well. And to, you know, keep it at number one. So you've got to invest all the time. You've got to recreate, try things, and open up new pathways. That's the first part. And the second part, I think, is to give a more direct relationship, if you like, um, something you know, more forward-looking with the Americans as well. I mean, I think we need to reinitialize, if you like, to reboot... Uh, you know, to replant uh, some little seeds there with independent sound studios on the one hand, but as well, at the same time, dialogue with Asia. The festival in Thierry do that very well with South Korea. And I think we need to look at all ways possible to develop dialogues with China. France and French cinema and the CNC in particular have worked a lot with the Peking Festival, the Beijing Festival, uh, with official Chinese cinema. I mean, I don't know what's unofficial in China, but, you know, and the Shanghai Film Festival. But uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, things like Wanda, which are investing, like, you know, companies investing a lot. I mean, they've bought up the uh, second uh, distribution uh, the theatrical release uh, network in in the US, MK. So, you know, have adventure films, we're looking at adventure films, we're looking at, you know, things which as well aren't Chinese. And in Shintao, which is uh, a city in the southwest, you know, it's a very temperate region, they want to have their own sort of chinichita and have a big festival in September 2017 onwards. They've got an agreement with the Oscars. We're talking with them. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But we're going to, you know, looking at, you know, uh, having uh, a Cannes Film Festival Day in Chintao. So that's what we're looking for. So you think there's thousands of possibilities for the festival and, uh, yeah, it's going to change. I mean, things will change. It won't change, but it'll develop, it'll evolve, and it'll live with its time. New technologies, globalization, the arrival of... Uh, Big partners, China, of course, which is creating its own World Bank at the moment, is creating as well its own cinema. So I think there are, you know, there's two multiplexes a month, 5,000 seats, you know, being, being, being built in China. So it's a country which is, you know, pirated so much, they nevertheless believe in theatres. You know, so can must be connected to this to this, uh, you know, this uh, cinema. Why does Cannes stay the greatest festival in the world and how can it remain, you know, so singular at a time when there is globalization that is there, which is taken, taking over from this uh, particularity? I think there's a couple of French particularities. Yes, yeah, incredible market. I mean, we're a small, medium-sized country or a medium-sized, large country, if you like, in terms of population. But thanks to the French system, which was born just after the war, with the CNC, with subsidies, with all the regulations that there were on things like this, you know, we are, you know, in relation to our population, we're the second uh, biggest cinema country in the world, if you like, in the number of theatres, in the diversity of the films, in the number of films. I mean, we finance, or we co-finance, a third of European films, two-thirds of Mediterranean films, and you know the system, you know, it's a very virtuous circuit, if you like, public aid, regional aid, regional subsidies, you know, uh, funding from the TV and 
as the uh, theatrical uh, release policy as well with the digitalization and so on. So it's something that everybody's jealous of around the world. Secondly, since 1946, the Cannes Film Festival has shown how open it is to the world and each year has justified more and more the qualification as being an international film festival. And this balance, even if this year we've got uh, you know, a wonderful French year, but this balance between international films, films from around the world, and French films, this balance between the market and the selection, this balance between new filmmakers and you know, established filmmakers, it's so lively. I mean, it's much more lively than where else. And you know, as the French system means uh, that it's a major art, cinema is a major art in French cultural policy, and it always has been, this means it's got a certain supremacy over the others. So, I mean, you must never miss Toronto. It's a wonderful market, you know, where there's 1,500 films, which are you know, all over the place. But in Cannes, you know, the people here saw 1,800 films, they're presenting 50. Oh, I'm not going to talk to the president, but to the person now. Apparently, you've uh, come to every festival since the 1970s. I mean, why is it so important to you? Well, my first visit was for Europe 1, the radio, Europe 1, in 1977. I mean, radio was, at the time, much more important than, uh, than uh, TV. It had more money and everything. So two hour-long programs with uh, Eddie Mitchell and Jean-Claude Brioli for the French films. Me there as a sort of uh, host, anchorman. And uh, so we had these two hours of programming a day in a wonderful studio on the Croisette in the same way that the TV would today. And we had this massive villa in the, in the uh, you know, up above in the heights above Cannes. We all lived there with the technicians, us, Jean-Claude Brialy, uh, you know, uh, you know, and uh, the King of Morocco, you know, you know, and he said hello to everybody, you know, he said hello to the sailors and all that sort of stuff. And uh, so we'd spent the night there, you know, in the big kitchen there until early in the morning. And, you know, we'd just talk about the films we'd seen during the day. And, you know, we saw ourselves all day long. In the evening, we did our two hours of programming. I don't know, I was in 77, I was, what, maybe 28 years old. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. And it's seminal in a way. And it was a time when you had Apocalypse Now. You had all that jazz. You had the first Terrence Malick's coming out. I mean, you thought you'd seen everything during the week. And then, wham, you've got Manhattan. You know, and it was just like that all the time. And, and it was just this pleasure. And it's like, you know, something that never leaves you, you know, uh, from the last day to the first day of next year. What sort of a spectator are you? Well, I'm 69 years old now. And, uh, you know, when it's too violent, I hide my eyes. I cover my eyes. You know, I laugh too much when it's funny. And I still cry like a baby when I'm touched. What's the biggest emotion you've had here on the screen in Cannes? Well, it's not the biggest emotion, but I think it's the most beautiful emotion, if you like. You know, when you ask the, the, this question, this is what springs to mind. It was the first Terence Malick I saw, uh, Days of Heaven, with Richard Gere, Sam Shepard, with the quality of the colour. It was just incredible. I mean, it was almost, you know, like, uh, uh, you know, paper photography, like, and uh, in these in these fields, in you know Ennio Morricone's music, of course. And so on screen, I was seeing this this work, if you like, this of image by image, frame by frame. And Terence had maybe found more than ever the balance between the voiceover and the dialogues, and the silence. You know these these silences, which uh, was so full. And I was still young, but I, I said to myself, you know, this is why in France we call it the seventh art. I mean, it's an art in its own right. I mean, how can you explain? You know, you said, I still laugh too much. I cry, I'm afraid. How do you keep this idea of being, you know, with the life you've, you've had, you know, with all everything you've done? I mean, it's fantastic that you can still be, you know, a, a basic ordinary viewer, if you like, or uh, a cinema goer. No, I mean, my legitimacy, in fact, comes from my passion and my emotion as a journalist. And I was born into a family that went to the cinema all the time, that went to the theatre all the time. They read a lot, they listened to music. And the first time I saw my grandmother cry 
It was when Gérard Philippe, the actor, died. I mean, she was uh, a head teacher in a primary school, and she had a lot of uh, responsibilities. She was a citizen, but she was moved. So that's what I'm like. But you know, and you know, w you know, the day when you don't laugh, when you don't see as much, when you don't cry as much, when you're less moved, when you're less frightened, that means you've already died a bit. I'm just saying this for uh, people who aren't paying enough attention. Did you ever dream about being an actor or a, a director? Because you look, you look a bit like an actor. Are you saying that because I've got a big nose? No, no, no. I mean, you've got sort of an actor's actorish look about you. No, I mean maybe you've got the uh, the uh, the uh, the chat as well, you know. But I mean maybe that's something that comes from the films. But uh, Philippe Garnier wrote a great book on characters, you know, in the American sense of the term, you know. You know, the the sort of the people uh, that uh, you see in the background, these sort of character actors. Maybe I could be a character actor. So you're going to have your first festival as a president. Is there a moment you're dreaming of already? I think I'll be extremely moved. At the top of the steps, I'll, you know, I'll have fun. It'll be great. I'll be really happy to welcome all the actors, the actresses, the directors, the producers. I'll be proud. I'll be proud because... I know that for them it's got a meaning. You know, Thierry said after the selection, you know, these phone calls that kept, you know, uh, coming from friends of him and ours, you know, mutual friends, their emotion, the way that they were just sort of, uh, you know, the w uh, following the announcement that they were telling uh, their friends, as you know, saying to themselves, you know, one said, you know, I, I just walked across Paris to go home because I was just so happy and they were just overwhelmed, if you like. And in this happiness, there's the fact of being selected. And going up the steps, you know, towards the screening, it's not just, you know, it's not applause. You know, you're going up towards this massive screen and my film's going to be screened there. And that's beautiful. And that's what Thierry and I are going to be welcoming. So being among those that welcome is something that's very touching. And w at the awards as well, I think this will be when I'll be most moved because, as I said, you know, when the selection was announced, the success of a festival is when you say this year the festival has meant that people around the world want to go to the cinema more than last year. If we can do that this year, I'll be, I'll shed a tear or two. Where do you have the best viewpoint on the Cannes Film Festival? In, in the, in the theatre, in front of the screen, no question about it. Because you've got the quality of the, of the screenings here, of the projection, I mean, it's, you know, it's unparalleled. Uh, the sound is wonderful. The technical teams of Pierre William Glenn are uh, the sound people. I mean, they spend the whole night, if you like, with the director, just tweaking and you know getting everything really right, really perfect. You know, some on film, some on digital as well. But to get everything, you know, as near perfect as possible when the screening actually comes. So I mean, there's no better viewpoint. So, and uh, what future are you dreaming of for the festival? Or is it too early for you? No, no, there is one thing, I think. There's one objective. Thierry and I have both got this idea of having this sort of, uh, you know, this brand, if you like. It's one of the most cultural brands in France. You know, it's the most well-known uh, cultural event in the world because, you know, I mean, you know, the essential thing is the fortnight, the director's fortnight. But, you know, throughout the year, throughout the world, in big cities, in cinemas, to have days, weeks of programming in multiplexes where there is a festival, you know, Cannes Film Festival programming. That would be a wonderful objective to have it going on throughout the year. Yeah, with that in mind, of course, the idea of the tribute tri to uh, Ingrid Bergman. Yeah, yeah, with Isabella Rossellini, she'll be in London and she'll be at the BAM in uh, uh, New York, the Broadway Academy of Music in Paris at the Châtelet and in Rome then afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think it's uh, very, very emotional to see the photo of her, her mother, Ingrid Bergman and Isabella being here.